Uh, hello, sixth years. This is, uh, I suppose, to come with my class for the week. Uh, it's really great uh, to chat to you all. Um, I spent a good, di- good bit of time on Friday uh, adding people onto the Teams uh, group. I just wanted one sort of comprehensive method of communicating to everybody. Um, if you'd like to get in contact with me, uh, school email or the chat features in Teams uh, is a really great way to uh get in touch and if i can help in any way i'd i'd love to do that um so i i i put a message the code is up on teams so if there's somebody who wasn't added sometimes if you say import 30 people onto one note or something like that 28 or 29 people get added and then one doesn't and uh so i the the code is up on uh flexi buzz on the sixth year flexi buzz so if you're not added um to the team uh just use the code feature to add yourself in but i'm pretty sh- sure the vast vast majority of the year are are added and so feel free to use the chat feature and to touch base if you could keep an eye on the posts the six year guidance posts on teams um i will add list links or uh, maybe put up a piece of advice and similarly the the march notices section of OneNote, i kind of use that as a kind of a blog if something's important i'll try and put up, up it up there as well so uh just to to, to help really in, in any way uh that i can do and uh, things are like i suppose i'll talk about three three things i like to talk about first of all a little bit about uh speculation uh secondly but a little bit about I suppose how to work or how to keep uh, focused uh, for this week and then I'll talk a small amount about the merits of a gap year and uh, I'll do I'll do that at the end. Uh, so let's just start off about I suppose speculation and there is something that you hear um, it's kind of funny you spend a lot of time maybe talking to people probably on uh, say group chats that sort of thing and uh some people can hear something and like I've heard stuff myself not relating to to school or anything like that. You you hear stuff, you don't know for sure if it's true or not. If it's something to do with the leave insert or college or please feel free to touch base with me and I'll just give you my opinion and what I believe. And I don't know to what degree of speculation there is about this sense that maybe the leave insert won't happen. And I can't tell you for hundred percent sure it will, uh, it will happen. But I would be incredibly surprised if it didn't. And I would, I would think very much. I would suggest uh, to every sixth year, to anyone doing the leave insert, to really work towards the leave insert happening in your school. You know, in early June, and make that like if someone says it's not going to happen. They don't know that because how would they? Uh, I myself haven't heard any teacher speaking about that. I haven't heard anything from the department. I haven't heard anything from the leadership in our school. Uh, but it's a very potentially damaging rumour because if someone believed the leave insert isn't going to happen, they're going to lose a lot of their motivation. And it's hard enough. Like Work study is probably the hardest work you'll ever do. And a rumor like that will totally take away uh, your motivation. So it's a very, very damaging rumor. Uh, I will be, uh, I know this idea that maybe instead of the leave insert, they'll have predicted grades. Uh, that might happen in the UK because uh, the UK is different, a totally different system. Like predicted grades is far more embedded into their education system than it is in uh, the Republic. If you imagine they have A, B, C or D, so there's less grades, it's an awful lot easier to predict. And also teachers every year are predicting grades for students uh, through uh, the UCAS system. And those teachers themselves went through a system where their grades were predicted by their teachers. So the far much stronger culture of predicted grades and their predictions will be way more reliable because they have less grades and the teachers themselves are way more used of predicted grades. And also that they've done a greater amount of coursework 
So you could see what sort of path uh, somebody is on in the A-levels and what they're likely to get. While in the Leave Insert, some of your Leave Insert exams are very, they're top heavy. 100% of the marks you get, go, you get from the test in June. So like, say, for example, business or accounting, all the marks you get is on your paper. And it will be impossible to predict in any fair way what students will be getting. So if you do hear that, uh, I, I, I would be highly surprised if it was the case, and I know the government will probably be taken to court uh, by some very powerful people because someone's son or daughter didn't get a place and because of the predicted grades. Uh, so I just couldn't imagine that happening. And I really would, I know, I don't want to repeat myself, but I really will be working towards uh, the leave and start happening in early June, in your school, in early June. I, I would imagine I could see what happening is that the leave and start happens with social distancing, that you will probably have uh, more centres with less students in the centre than everyone's two metres apart. And uh, that's what I would imagine would happen. And that's what I'd be working towards. And I really would encourage you to do the same. And if it did get changed, it would be pushed back. So, you know, like work, it's not going to come earlier. That's for sure. So just work towards it happening on the date it's supposed to happen. And if things change, if a solution comes, because there's around 70,000 people in the same boat as you they're going to come up with a solution with you in mind and and that's that's important to note if uh, if you look at what happened with the orals like that was a very student-centered uh decision they could have taken other decisions to just go with the exam and scrap the oral uh but they elected to give people a hundred percent in that section and that alleviated the stress and anxiety of students and like a solution will come and but that's what the state examination commission that's their job our job is to try our best in the circumstances and and just to worry about something potentially that could happen in 10 10 weeks time will take away a little bit of the motivation from from the here and now so uh i suppose a little bit uh I, i'm in the playroom i i it was morning time uh, when I did the last video, but this is about the, the tidiest section of the playroom. I have some friends here. I have uh, Stretch Armstrong. He's clothes have faded, but he's still, he's still rocking it. And I have uh, Bumblebee here. He's a good guy as well. It's about the only clean section in the uh, in the playroom, so I'm kind of impressed with the uh, the, the the magic of... Uh, of video to ensure that um i'd like to switch to a little bit about how do we work or how do we motivate ourselves and i i'd be very teachers are very much like in a bubble and it's very difficult like if you set work or like i know it seems the most easiest thing in the world but if you're doing a maths test it's very hard to get the maths test long enough that students are working for a class but but short enough to finish like it's a very difficult thing because when a teacher sets a test or sets work they could do that work quite quickly because they came up with the questions but for someone to work it out takes takes much longer so uh, i suppose try and keep an open dialogue with your teachers because uh they they might know they might know like what you how much work you're getting in other papers and if there is i suppose any issue try use the chat feature on teams or email try and touch base with the teacher like if a teacher's giving you way too much or you feel maybe touch base and ask the teacher like look it's taking me this length of time is there you know keep an open dialogue because i know you know from my point of view uh, the work i give to students it's very hard for me to say to me it might be an hour's work but it might take them two hours but i only want them to do an hour so i suppose try and keep that open dialogue with your teachers and uh and like the chat or the email would be the would be the best way i suppose of working towards that um about like i, I suppose likewise 
I think uh, talking from an emotional point of view, um, I I think it's important to try try and tap into some of the more useful uh, emotions, um, maybe like hopeful or or anger even. You know, they can be very sometimes useful emotions right now you could feel at a loss or feel very sorry for yourself and why is this happening to me and you'd be right to feel that you know like what's happening six years right now all over the world it's a it's a really rough deal and it's a terrible thing to happen and you could feel very sad about that and that then would make it very difficult for for you to work because uh, you're in a low place and I would try and try and look for some sort of positive spin I know that seems very patronizing but like if you're talking about one way to say about it make it like sort of my hope if you feel hopeless to say well well at least there's 70,000 students in exactly the same position as me you know that if you felt like uh, your school was closed but the school next door was open you would feel well students in that school they got an unfair advantage but our school is closed so try and I suppose focus that other students are in the same boat they're in the same uh, trying to work at home trying maybe getting supported online and trying their best in a difficult situation so try and do that so, so like if there's any way sort of um, and when I'm talking about hope is if you uh, talk to a teacher who's gone to American conference, I've corrected the leave insert, I've corrected the junior cert, and you wouldn't believe the stuff that goes on behind the scenes in American conferences. That that if you have a, a hard paper, or if the results that come back are less than what expected, that paper then is accustomed to an easier marking scheme. That to sort of standardise, they have a rough idea of roughly how many A's or how many H1s they expect to get, and how many people fail. So, like, say, for example, if 3% people fail last year, and then this year it's, like, 12% people fail, that wouldn't be very fair, because it must have been a harder paper, so they tweak the marking scheme. So it's things like that that say, well, if, if, if uh, the class of 2020 uh, don't do as well, they, the, the papers themselves maybe maybe uh, tweaked the marking schemes can be amended uh, to take into account how a particular year group went and you might be you know six months down the line if you look at the average results in the leaving cert of 2020 they could be quite similar to the leaving cert results in 2019 and and uh, and why is that because maybe there's positive and negatives that there's some positives and some negatives and maybe they balance each other out and one potential positive would be like the the mock results so people you know would probably do better or could do better in their music in their irish and their languages because uh they've done so well in the practical end of it you know so so like that then if that student does slightly worse in another subject because they were working on their own a little bit more there are leaving certain results might still come out something quite similar. So just anything that can introduce a part like emotion, like hope, hope is something that gives you energy, gives you a reason to work. Uh, that might be just imagine what's it like. I really want to get to this college. I want to work for it. And that hopefully will, will get you. Another potential like, uh, you know, is get angry, you know, like get angry. I'm angry at the coronavirus. Uh, I, I, uh, barely have left the house in probably three four weeks like everybody it is an unbelievable set of circumstances and you can i would like uh encourage it to get maybe get angry at the coronavirus and say well i'm not going to be a victim of you i am going to be a survivor you know and maybe play some acdc something like back in black or something like that and look at the window and look at the mirror, not the window, because people thought that was strange. Look at the mirror and say, I am not, I am going to survive this and I am going to try my best, you know, and that in difficult circumstances. And one sort of mantra that I would say is that your best, 
your best is good enough, you know, and uh, if you can try your best in adversity, you might be surprised with how well you do. And uh, just, uh, I would not, back to the speculation with the leaving search, I would just be focusing on this week. Like, how can I work as hard as I can for this week and this week alone? And if you can, at the end of tomorrow, Monday, you feel like I had a good day there, just say, that's brilliant. I'll focus on having a good day tomorrow. And uh, because if you focus on anything that's 12, 10 weeks away, that's a long way to keep working. But if you focus on what do I need to do tomorrow, that, that, could, that could make a real difference tomorrow. So I know it is it is really, really difficult. But if you can just focus on those emotions, say hope and maybe anger, it depends on your personality, uh, that are a little bit more useful, that kind of give you the energy, hopefully the positive energy to work in really, really difficult, really difficult circumstances. Um, and I talked briefly about a gap year. Now, a gap year is very common in the UK. It's where somebody, uh, I suppose, they've been doing school for 14 years, like education has been rammed down your throat and maybe you've had enough and you want to take a year out before you continue on with your education. And it's becoming slightly more common because college has got very expensive. Like it's it's a big, big financial commitment to go to college and you kind of want to be really sure that the college course is for you uh, because if you try it and drop out, it might be difficult to go back. And like in my last school, uh, I used to teach in Dublin and typically I used to teach in a school called the high school in Dublin and uh, I was there for eight years and if somebody was to start a college course, drop out, it's a much easier for that person to go next year because they haven't moved home. They haven't changed their friendship group. Uh, they, very few aspects of their life has changed. Well, I, I'm from Cavan. I went up to college, uh, to Dublin to go to college. And some of my friends dropped out. But it's very difficult then for them to go back because when they drop out, they go back to Cavan. And then will they go back up to Dublin the following year or go elsewhere? It's a little bit more difficult because they might start doing something else and then they'll have to give that up in order to go back to college. So if you're not, if you get an offer in August and you're not really excited about it, uh, maybe it's a mature thing to do is to maybe defer that course for a year, take a year out, you have your leaving cert points and it might be the chance to, weigh your options up to make sure if you really really want to do it and if you will find yourself starting college if you go to college next year and you're 18 you might find yourself you're actually one of the youngest in the class because nearly everyone maybe has done ty loads of people have taken years out so being 18 going to college is not old it's it's that you'll put yourself probably in the youngest youngest quarter or definitely the youngest half of your class uh, it's definitely not for everybody and it might be something to think about right now or for somebody else it might be something to think about in august but every year i'd have maybe up to five or six uh, loretta students who would touch base with me one way or the other and it's amazing how easy it is to decide what you want to do when you have your leaving cert points uh, you you have your leaving cert points so you would uh, look at the college courses, you know which ones you could get, you would get, you know the ones you probably get, and then you know the ones that you possibly won't ever get. And that's a lot easier uh, to decide what you want to do. Like the Leaving Cert, it's a bit like a step into the unknown. You're kind of going in, it's like going into a shop wanting to buy a pair of jeans, but you don't know how much money's in your wallet. And you go and look up like, a, oh yeah, uh, stretch here he needs a pair of jeans but like he's going uh he's going looking for a pair of jeans and he picks out one he likes but he doesn't have enough money then for it because uh he doesn't have the money in his wallet so it's it's kind of having your leave and start points and your results makes it so much easier to decide uh what course you'd like to do and, and it also helps get your head around it because if you say well i know i'm going to this course and i know it's in galway you will know six months, nine months in advance where you're going to be 
and it makes a lot of other things a lot easier. Uh, if you're considering about going to college uh, overseas, it's a massive advantage to have a gap year. Uh, because if you take a gap year or maybe apply to UCAS, you could get an offer straight away uh, and you could get an offer maybe in January. And then, you know, in January, next September, you're going to be in Newcastle. It's a lot easier to get your head around being there. While if you apply for UCAS this year, it's in August, you'll know for sure if you're getting it because you'll only get a conditional offer, an offer based on you getting particular grades in your leave insert. So you'll only know for sure that you're going in August and then one month's time you have to be there in September. It's quite a quick, it's quite a quick turnaround. So likewise, if you're thinking about like it, maybe to go to college overseas, being a year older, making sure, yeah, this is exactly what I want to do. A, you know, a gap year would, would help you with that. Uh, different things like you, it's always a nice idea to defer your course. You could say like I got offered this course, wasn't 100% sure it's for me. I decided to defer it. I'm going to take you out and see if it's uh, for me or not. Uh, one potential benefit is like, as I was saying, is that do it's a nice idea to do a gap year potentially, but it wouldn't be a really good idea to do it directly after your college degree. You can imagine if you did, uh, say, business studies in DCU, and you're like, you did a four-year degree in business, then you take a year out, maybe to go to Australia to find yourself. You come back, you're kind of in a worse position than someone who's coming straight out of college the year after you. Because you go, they have just finished the degree. They would say, like, if you go for an interview and you say, took a year out, you go, it's very hard to say you're passionate about business. So the employer would say, well, you just took a year out. You can't be that passionate, you know, or the skills that you learn are one year out of date versus the person who's coming straight through. So it's kind of like the best time to take gap year is either between the leave and search and when you go to college or another really great time is during your college year. So maybe you do one year in college or two years, you could take a gap year ideally you do something relevant to your chosen course so if you're in a did business you go work at an accountancy firm and then go back to finish your degree because that way you've got the relevant experience and you're coming out finishing your qualification as you're looking for for the job so if it's not for you this year keep it in the back of your mind it might be something you could do during your college course because if you do maybe one year of your college course, you could take a year off and then do year two uh, the following year. Uh, things, if you do decide to take a gap year, uh, things you could do. One thing I'd say is put a bit of structure, like if anything, the last two or three weeks will have taught us all that life without structure is very difficult, you know, and if you decide to take a gap year, really try try and plan the year out. Like it's a wonderful opportunity uh, and think about, well, what how I've taken a year out to invest in myself. What would I like to achieve? Because uh, you could end up being a prolonged summer holiday that you actually didn't really regret. It didn't really uh, achieve what you'd hoped to achieve. So if you think about how can I put a bit of structure on that year, uh, it could be uh, could be a course at Cavan Institute. It could be living abroad. Maybe you have a, a brother or sister who lives in another country. It could be working up in Dublin. Uh, just try and plan it out. But structure is really good uh, because that way uh, you won't be at home thinking, wishing you were doing things because you're busy. So structure really helps. If you were thinking like a lot of people would use uh, Cavan Institute as a sort of a structured year out. Um, and if you were thinking about going to Cavan Institute, I'd recommend applying as soon as possible, because I'd imagine with the whole coronavirus thing, it would be a more popular now to apply for Cavan than it would have been before because of so much uncertainty. So if you were thinking about applying to Cavan Institute, if you apply now, the chances are you probably get your first choice. While if you leave it to later in the year, you 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 might miss out on your first choice course, and uh, like that's the way my understanding of the way Cavan Institute works is sort of first come first serve basis. They don't have uh, a, an absolute deadline of when to apply, uh, but if a course is full, you might have to wait for someone to not take up their position in order for you to get your first choice course. So if you were thinking, it's a simple enough process. 
it's uh, calvininstitute.ie. You can click apply. It's uh, free to apply, but then they'll come back with you at a later date wanting you to pay a deposit. So it's really up to you. But uh, if you were thinking about applying, I'd probably do it sooner rather than later, uh, given given the uh, particular circumstances. Um, likewise, uh, the next uh, different classes, I'd like to do budgeting uh, for college, uh, CAO change of mind and uh, transition to college uh, work. But if there is something, like, like I said, I know I mentioned being in a bubble, uh, like if there is something that you would like uh, maybe dealt with for the year group, uh, please uh, let me know and I can maybe talk, put that on or if there's a particular you know, area or something that you feel uh, would would be worth me t spending five or six minutes on in one of these classes, I'd be delighted to do it. And you could just drop me an email uh, or drop me a message. I would uh, like to do that. And uh, lastly, I just, I know like it is really, really, my heart goes out to you. It's a very difficult time. And just to try and focus on this week, you know, and try and shut out uh, all of what's going on and just try and settle into a good rhythm and whatever the solutions that will come and uh, we will hopefully see the back of this coronavirus and whatever solution uh, that comes for the leave insert, it will come. And uh, But focusing on the leave insert now might take your motivation away I would just really focus on this week and try try and work towards that. So uh, best wishes, drop me uh, an email if I can help in any way and uh, best of luck with the week.